Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Spumelele Zondi. Now, this evening we have information on the Africa Com conference that took place in Cape Town. We also have information on the Geo Josie uh, initiative that's been happening in Johannesburg. And we will discuss. Uh, we have a discuss we have a discussion with Africa Check and that's coming up later in the program. Let's start with your technology and social media news. All right, now bot brand penetration was a major topic at last year's AfricaCom, but this year there was a new buzzword, and that's a narrow band IoT. Nebo Sijake was there. We love AfricaCom! Indeed, they do. The Information Communications and Telecommunications Conference Com Exhibition opened its doors at the Cape Town International Convention Center for the 19th time this year. And in 2016, like previous years, the CTICC was swamped with techies from all over the world. Amongst the school children and suits present at the event was Minister of Telecommunications and Postal Services Dr. Siabong Atuele, who took to the stage for a keynote speech at AfricaCom's opening day. We're happy that all of you are brought together by an unflinching desire to use technology to serve humanity better by addressing our everyday challenges in the African continent. The theme of this year's conference is harnessing the transformative power of African digital revolution, the internet as an engine for economic development and social empowerment. Last year's AfricaCom focused on broadband penetration and solutions available for the distribution of fast and affordable internet connectivity to the African people. Fast forward to 2016 with the rolling out of NBIoT, otherwise known as Narrow Band Internet of Things, became a trending topic. South Africa's network provider MTN and China's Huawei Technologies announced their partnership and also showed a demo of the NBIoT. We sat down with the two entities to unpack the solution. It's a communication standard that will allow ubiquitous devices to be connected onto the internet. Uh, I think you may have heard over through multiple iterations that uh, everybody talk about internet of everything or internet of things, which is really about connecting things and connecting everything onto the internet. And what it means is you need to then find a better mechanism, low cost, low power, that will allow for that connectivity to actually happen uh, in South Africa and the continent. For example, like the power meter, power meter, uh, if we install uh, some model in the meter, in the power meter, so the power meter can regularly uh, share the information to the utility company utility company can collect this information to understand uh, how many, how amount uh, power you have consumed. And even they have some problems, the utility company also know what happened and then go to the side to fix it. So it is a, it is a, it is a technology to save the operation cost, also increasing the efficiency. Huawei recently launched a digital in-cloud service that enables music content providers to upload their work so that it can be made available to network providers so that fans are able to download it. At AfricaCom, the video version of the solution called Huawei Envision was introduced to the South African market. Exhibitors and young startup companies from all corners of the world fill the CTICC ready to share various digital solutions with the African continent. The 19th annual AfricaCom opened its doors on Tuesday, November 15th and ended on the 18th. Now the Georgia the Challenge has announced its winner. Tapelo Sikwena has an idea that will use geolocation to better locate houses including in informal settlements. Informal settlements and some townships either have no house numbers or badly marked locations. That's why the city of Johannesburg, Joburg Center for Software Engineering, ESRI and Wits University decided to launch a challenge that would find a tech solution to solve this. It's called GeoJosie. 
Informal settlement is uh, one of the big challenges. You know, as uh, you would have noted, even with the IEC, that uh, they had a problem of identifying um, voting stations and where people can be able to vote in local government elections. And we've got places in Soweto which which are known by stand numbers instead of street numbers, and there's just a whole mess within the same street. You find others are, are, are calling it a street name, a street number. Others are calling it a stand number. So it becomes a, a bit of a problem. Living in a big city like Joburg, there are a lot of us who do have addresses, but there are even more who don't have a, a, a fixed address or a known address. So the challenge was really how we use digital to look at things like how you capture addresses, how you maintain addresses, and how you use addresses in the city. They started with a group of more than 70 entrants, and they had to narrow it down to about 10. Each one had their own tech solution. The three winners had different apps that use geolocation to map out the city. You click that button, it's a simple home button. You click that button, it's going to generate a code, a unique code. It's not going to be duplicated with other homes. It's going to be unique for your home. And then down there, it's going to, underneath the, the code, it's going to be a street address or a home address. And then you, you have an option to correct that if it's, if it's correct or not correct. Right? If you don't have a home address, it's catered for. You, because basically what happens, I'm not capturing the street address and everything. We're capturing your geo coordinates. So if you stay in a shack, you still have an address because we know where you are. I have your coordinates, then I have your address. It tracks your, your address, where you are, your location, gives you a set of points in, a, in an area where you are and says, these points need uh, addressing, you know. And if you go to that place, you... you you can geotech the place, you take a picture of the place, you put the address of the place. We store those addresses and based on the numbers of people who can actually go to those places, it's more like a game. People who can redeem those places, they get points at the ultimate and they win data. All three received a prize money and incubation in Johannesburg's new Timolo Hong prison. Now, all over Africa, the internet has helped people start new industries. It also helps that more and more people from this continent are getting connected. While we've heard of governments who block their net in times of protest, the numbers of those that are increasing that get access to the internet. Time for class at the University of Ghana. 25-year-old Sheila Apenna's first lesson comes mid-morning, three hours earlier. She got up and the first thing she did was use her phone to access the internet. She will do this many times throughout the day to chat with friends, to study and for entertainment. In life without the internet, I don't know how it would have been. It would have been so boring because this is what relieves me of the stress I go through every day. It says that you read so many things online which are hilarious. It helps you relax. It gives you information about what's going on in the other parts of the world too. In a quest to keep speed with the rest of the world, many African governments are investing in fiber optic cables to improve bandwidth. And it has started paying off. According to McKinsey and Company report of 2013, internet's contribution to the GDP in Africa is in the excess of 18 billion US dollars. Nick Kuyana is considered the father of internet in Africa. Professor Ni nee is credited with establishing some of Africa's first internet connections. The science professor acknowledges the journey Africa has made to take all corners of the continent on the web, but says more needs to be done. I am a typical user in Africa. And if you take me as that typical user, there are 30% of us using the internet. I don't believe so. And if this premise that I'm using just to point out the gravity of the situation, if this premise is indeed true, then I think we have to double up. I'm not saying we're not doing anything right or wrong, but I'm saying that there's a lot we got to do. Social media has empowered entrepreneurs, political activists and campaigners to grow incomes, provide opportunities to lift many young people out of poverty, help change regimes and get people's voice heard. 
with connectivity already a priority. Some believe more of Africa's internet users need to leverage the web as a tool to build industries and not just leave it for big foreign companies. I think the fact that information is um, so readily available. I mean, we act like we were not the generation of encyclopedias, but we really are. And you'd always have to spend hours and hours trying to find things, but on the internet and with cell phones especially, it's just one click away. Tech engineer Beatrice Coffey believes by focusing education and training, more African success stories will continue to come as a surprise. Not many people have gone to school to learn how to use the internet. It's something that one can learn quickly by using it. People can easily access it and in some cases, people who didn't know how to use it before were surprised on how quickly they can adapt to it. As the face of the continent online changes, the web continues to be a key driver of growth and development in Africa. However, for that growth to continue, more investment in infrastructure needs to be a key point of focus. Now, former Metro FM DJ Thibaut Touch attacked on Twitter and Mark Zuckerberg defends Facebook. These are just some of the tech stories making headlines. Former Metro FM DJ Thibaut Touch celebrated too soon on his data falling campaign. Touch Central presenter was left with an egg on his face when chips attacked him. They felt that Tibo Touch betrayed them in the Data Must Fall campaign because it occurred that MTN data bundle costs falling were only meant for Night Express. Tibo Touch said that data costs would decrease to 65 rand a gig and 99 rand for 2 gig. In Singapore, the People's Association has launched a Seniors for Smart Nation program. The key mission is to prepare seniors to be smart nation ready, allowing a seamless integration into the community. Philip Chu says this program has improved his computing skills. My level of computer literacy was quite basic and I think through these classes uh, they have taught me a lot and have helped me improve my skills in uh, computing and now I believe I am quite competent uh, well, at least to some degree, uh, in, a, in being able to use these applications for my uh, daily use uh, in a very practical manner. Going over to Lima, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg attended the Asia Pacific Cooperation Summit, where he promoted connectivity. He rejected the notion that Facebook influenced the outcome of the US elections also saying that the fake news is not a problem on the service. Research shows that for every 10 people who get online, about one person gets lifted out of poverty and almost one new job gets created. So if we can connect the 4 billion people who are unconnected, we can lift hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. Kate Wilkinson is in studio. She's from Africa Check. We're going to discuss fake news websites. Stay with us, SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Make your house ultra homey with Macro's big festive season savings on appliances like Samsung Inverter Air Conditioners now 8599 each, save 2000 Rand. A Philips Air Fryer and Hand Blender Combo get both for only 1999 and save 1000 Rand. And how cool is the Hisense 340 liter frost free fridge for 5999, save 500 Rand. Share in these and other big festive savings for home, for business, for life. Only at Macro, big on life. It's SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram News Network at SABC.co.za and email. Welcome back. Now, recently we've seen many false stories being shared by social media users. They often get these from fake news websites. Now, Google and Facebook have said they will block such sites from using the platforms to make money. We went to the streets to find out if people verify facts before sharing information on social media.
I don't. I don't check whether it's legit or not. If it tickles my friends, they're just going to share it for my friends to check it out as well. If it interests me, then I will verify it. And then I'll get to the point of sharing it. <laughs> well, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Uh, I usually verify like some sensitive stuff, such as racism comments. Like for instance, if it's about um, maybe something that is trending, I first go into Google, check the facts properly before I actually put it up there. Now joining us in the studio to talk about the need to verify information before sharing it is Kate Wilkinson. She is from Africa Check. Hello and thank you for being a part of our network, Kate. Thanks for having us tonight. Mm. Uh, now can you tell us about these uh, fake news websites? Where do they come from? Well, they've existed probably for as long as the internet has existed, but recently we've really seen them pop popping up more often, their stories being spread and shared more widely, um, and what we see is that they can increasingly have an effect on decisions people are making and the information that they're sharing on social media. All right. Um, and is it illegal to run such a site? At this stage, it would depend on the website, on the story, and who would want to pursue this sort of le legal action against them. But may, whether it's illegal or not is another question. But an important question is, you know, are these fake news stories having an impact on people and the decisions that they're making about politics, their health, where they live, and what security risks they're taking seriously? And are they? It depends. Across the continent, we fact check stories um, about health. Just this week, we looked at whether there's a link between um, circumcision and cancer. We fact check stories about whether salt water and detail, if mixed together and consumed, can prevent or cure Ebola. Um, and these are very serious health stories, which could have serious health implications. And what we see, especially with the Ebola story, is that some people receive this information. They took it as true. They used it to try and make a health decision, and it actually led to the death of a number of people. Oh, no. So it can actually have serious implications. Um, and while some people might think, you know, it could be a funny story, it could be humorous or shocking or sensational, sharing false news, like you said, is putting money in someone's pocket because there's advertising involved. And you're spreading misinformation, which people might use to make a decision. And tell us about the Ebola detail story. Yeah, so we fact-checked a number of stories, images, um, and pictures over the years. And when there was the Ebola outbreak across the continent, there were a number of stories being shared on on news websites and, and what we see here is it's not always just the fake news websites you need to have your nonsense detector tuned in even on legitimate media because sometimes false info can creep in there and people were being told that either a way to prevent or treat Ebola was to um, either bath in salt water or to consume a lot of it um, and as any doctor will tell you consuming a lot of salty water can be very dangerous to your health and it actually led to the death of a number of people who were trying to look after themselves but because they had bad information they couldn't make an informed decision. Where did that information come from? Where was the um, originality of that story? In some or cases, where did it originate from rather? In some cases it's difficult to track. Um, with the fake news websites that we see cropping up in South Africa even that can be tricky because we, we've tried to figure out who these people are and we haven't had, had any luck so far but often you know people want to be helpful they hear something they think may be true instead of stopping, verifying it, thinking, is there someone that I can speak to to help figure out if this is fact or fiction? They click the share button, they pass it on to their friends, and it's just a snowball effect. You know, one piece of gossip can turn into something which can just take social media by storm. Mm. Um, uh, we, when we went to the streets, a lot of people said that they checked their facts before um, sharing it online. Is that what you're finding? Um, I think some people do, um, but what we see increasingly is if you look at any of these fake news websites, this content on Facebook, on Twitter, it is shared ferociously. It goes viral. Um, this week, like I said, the story about the link between circumcision and cancer of the penis went completely viral. And maybe some people do, but what we see, the, the, the proof is in the pudding, is that people do share these stories without checking. Mm. And the, the really the best thing you can do when it comes to figuring out if you should say, share something is pause. Often we're too quick to hit that share button without actually thinking, could this be true? And often if you take that moment, you'll find your common sense kicks in and you'll start coming up with some questions. The next thing that you can do, um, the saying used to be think before you speak, now we like to say Google before you tweet. If it sounds too good to be true, get onto Google, put the information in there and see where it comes up. 
It can be sometimes a bit tricky because often if a story does go viral, other fake news websites are going to pick up on it because they know there's traction there. But if you're not seeing sort of mainstream media, reputable media institutions reporting on it, then you should question um, its accuracy and whether you should share it. Mm. And, and the thing is, if it's shared a lot of times, it goes right to the top of the news feed and it yes. starts getting suggested on social media. So that's, that's part of the problem is that we see on Facebook, we see even on Google that um, there's something called an algorithm, which is sort of the calculation that a website will use to determine whether something is popular. Because they know if they put that onto people's news feeds, if they put that into the search results, it's popular and people are going to interact it. Um, just recently with the American elections, we saw that a fake news story about Donald Trump winning the popular vote, which means that he got the most votes um, in America, even though Hillary won it. Um, this fake news story, if you search for the, the popular Tazzolo. votes, it was the first result that came, even though it wasn't true. And that was because people were interacting with it. All right. It seems like we have a fly visiting us <laughs> in the studio. Thanks very much for joining us, Kate Wilkinson. Thank you so much. All right. Kate Wilkinson there is from Africa Check. It's SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Stay with us. We're coming right back after the break. Macro is going big on festive season savings with high-tech deals like the new PS4 1TB Slim Console with Call of Duty and God of War 3, only 5999 save 700 Rand. A Samsung 55-inch Smart Curved UHD LED TV for 14999 save 3000 Rand. And save 100 Rand on the new TomTom Tom Touch Activity Tracker, now only 2399 Share in these and other big festive savings for home, for business, for life. Macro, big on life. Welcome back now. Let's see what you've been sharing on social media. In South Africa, many people are at the Eat Out Awards. They're taking place in Johannesburg. They reward some of the best restaurants in South Africa. Kanye West has been trending all over the world. This is because many accuse him of only performing for half an hour at his concert. Fans are angry with him. In Kenya, the country has been playing cricket against Hong Kong. Kenya won the match. In the last week, uh, on our Twitter poll, we asked you what you use social media for. It seems the vast majority of people say they use it to read the news. That figure is at 78%. Second to that are people who use it to chat to their friends. That's sitting at 17%. 5% says they use it to troll celebrities. And that's all we have for you. Find us on SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. News Network at SABC does here, does it on email. We leave you with a video of intelligent parking put to use in a large municipality in southwest China. From me and the rest of the network team, have a good one. Bye-bye.